There's a little better fish, Alec, not a lot. Alec. Yes, sir. In all things remain calm. Well, 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 today we have got a great, great, great show. We were going to start out fishing with a future Major League Baseball pitcher. Uh, he's got to make the grade first, but it's going to come. But we cover at least 1,500 miles total in our little fishing trip today. So I'm not going to give you all the clues, but I'm telling you, you got to watch to see how interesting this day is going to unfold. Fishing with my buddy that I've known for a long time, for his whole entire life. My buddy Alex Seward, who is my grandson, future major league pitcher, and a great guy. Let, let me just tell you this right here. I'm very biased, but I'm telling you, this is a great kid. It just warms my heart to get to spend the day with him in the boat. So it's going to be a fun time for me, and I know it will be for you as well. Stay with me. I'm Hank Parker. How do I look? You are so handsome. Look at that camera. Now, is this a handsome boy? Look at him. Turn around, look at that camera. But tell him you're not available. I am not available. How beautiful is this? Pretty pretty. You did it, take it. All right, just throw it right here toward the edge of the weeds. It slows the key. Alec is not an experienced right, fisher. Try throwing overhand, don't do that. So a couple of things I want to talk about is one, he couldn't get any distance out of his bait casting reels, and then when he would fight to get more distance, he would end up getting an overrun. So the key to learning how to fish a bait casting reel is to come back and stop, completely stop. Don't load it up and throw it. Come back and absolutely, completely stop, and then kind of push it and you'll develop that feel. Thank you, handle the spinning reel. Just look out for loops every time you cast it. Watch this. Now, as we start out, Alec is looking fairly awkward. And in his defense, he's an awesome athlete. And he catches on quick. But this is pretty much new territory. So we're throwing baits to the corner of the right. grass. OK. All right. Try to get it to the catcher, buddy. And it's it's precision casting, and it's a little bit out of his element. Look at here. Right Look at here. here. All right, hold on now. Don't, don't do that. All right, let me give you a little lesson. Go, that's about as close as you want to get right there. Now, he ate that thing. All right, hold on now. That's a big fish to lift it like that. You almost He's really it. struggling with overruns. He's struggling with throwing short. He's throwing too long sometimes. He's having issues. Harder, harder. There you go. Might be a good fish. Never to get the hook set. See what you do there. And so, as the day went on, he got pretty darn good. Stay with him, Tim. Alec, he didn't. We might double up here. Oh, I lost mine. You got yours. I lost mine. Pretty good little spot right here. We had us a double going. Talk to him, Alec. Be mean to him. Yeah, boy. Come on, boy. I didn't stick him. I did not stick him. I have not stuck him yet. I got him stuck now. Boy, it took him five tries. But when he finally decided he was going to get it, he got it. He ate it. I got it. He finally decided to get it. He got it. Pretty good one there, Tim. Alec, how many times have I called you Tim? Tim's my youngest son. And so I'll call you Tim. I used to go through the whole family name when I was mad at one. Hank, Bill, uh, Bill, uh, 
Then, uh, Lucy, uh, so I'm gonna do you like that today. Alec, 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 I got me one, buddy. That's beautiful, that's a good one. Put it under that cypress tree right there and see if you can get you one like it. Buddy, do it, buddy. We're fishing a lake that has some giant bass in it, and uh, I got a really good buddy who I've known for years and years and years. He's caught so many big fish. His grandson caught a 12 pounder out of this lake. So there's a lot of big fish. We have not done this lake justice. The lake is low, probably 18 inches low. It's been really, really dry. And we have fished the duckweed and the shallows. Now we're gonna go offshore and we're gonna see if we can't find the fish. You, you can be in a small lake, a 100 acre lake, a 50 acre lake. You still gotta figure out how to catch these fish and gotta figure out how to find them. A little better, Tim. Pretty solid fish there, Timmy. Pretty solid fish there, Alec. Yes, sir. I've called you Timmy about 55 times or more. We have really struggled. We came down here this morning and we fished all the edges of the duckweed. We used a, a new bait Berkeley's got called a general. Caught a few fish. Caught a few fish on a frog. And uh, they don't seem to be on the shoreline structure at all. So we're out in the middle and there are a lot of stumps. We're just making drifts in this wind, putting the talons down, fan casting. Alex throwing a Carolina rig cause the moss is so bad you can't throw a Texas rig. And I just picked up this spinner bait and hadn't been throwing it long and I lost a really big one and caught a really good one. So if that happens again, I think Alex gonna be fishing a spinner bait. Okay. It'll take you just a little bit, cause it is a lot of weight to get used to. I, I wanna tell you, it was beautiful and sunny and I look off and I see a lightning bolt. I'm there with my grandson and as soon as I see that lightning, I say, guys, we're through, we're done. So we set it out, it, the storm got worse and worse and worse. And while you're watching the show, you think, well, why did they quit? Well, we quit because it was storming. Ooh, there's some lightning right there. Hey, don't go away. We're gonna make a move. We're gonna be on another lake when you come back. I don't wanna take any chances. Hank's show is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats. Still building legends one at a time. Mercury Marine, go boldly. This portion of Hank's show is brought to you by Berkeley. Catch more fish. Now it's time for Hank's tip of the day. You know, when Berkeley first decided to get in the hook business, I thought, why in the world? There's 15 hook makers out there, and it looks to me like there are so many more soft plastics that can be developed, as you've proven this year. <laughs> why the hook business? And I thought I had a great hook in what I was using. I didn't realize you could improve hooks. And I'm very, very pleasantly surprised that these hooks are a big improvement over what I used before. Yeah, it's, you know, honestly, we were kind of shocked too how much better we were than the competition. Not bragging, well, a little bit, but. Yeah, brag, go ahead, I like bragging. <laughs> but we we literally didn't think we could outbeat them or out outdo them that much. So we, we have all sorts of machines at our plant that we literally test how fast a hook point goes in. We, we simulate a fish's mouth. So how many pounds of pressure does it take to go through there? And so obviously the shorter amount of time it gets through there, the thinner the hook and the sharper the hook. And we've proven that we go through this material faster than any other hook. So that's very important. And our hooks don't roll over. You know, and a lot of it's this, you know, this uh, slick set coating, that's coated on the hooks. A lot of that helps penetrate quicker, right? But so the sharpness plus that coating, and that got us to, you know, 25% better than most hooks we've ever tested. But for those of you that don't know Fusion 19, it's the sharpest hook you can possibly buy on the market. We've proven that. 
These things, you can do whatever test you want to them, but they will not roll over. Yeah, I've noticed that. I've fished in rocks. I've fished Carolina rigs where we quite often would bend the tip of a hook. And been using them now for almost two years. And, and I haven't bent one single tip. And that's pretty impressive. It's an amazing hook. I love it. It's sharpest hook you'll ever use, and it's the toughest. You know, I don't know if you noticed or not, but I was in a little different boat when I got to Texas. We started out in South Carolina in the 188, but you know, everything's bigger in Texas. Man, you gotta have a 21 foot, a big Z boat. So we're having a big time making a move from South Carolina to Texas. So we left South Carolina and Alec is in baseball camp in Tyler, Texas, which is not far from Lake Fork. So I've always wanted to fish Lake Fork in the summertime, never have. So we took off, I took off and drove across country and got out to Lake Fork. Well, it's 4th of July holidays and Alec's got a long weekend, so we're going fishing. When we get out there, it's 30 mile an hour wind. So this wind needs to die I down. Know, this wind's a killer, I hate that. It's 102 degrees and the wind's blowing 30 miles an hour. I mean, it's humming. So what I would normally do on those big ledges, what I love to fish is a Texas rig. That is a tungsten weight on a big 10 inch power worm. Lake Fork's got a lot of big bass in it, a lot of aggressive bass. So when you're fishing, in really, really tough structure, you cannot beat a Texas rig worm. Now here's the trade-off. 30 mile an hour wind. Finally caught a fish, Alec. Little fella. How in the heck you gonna feel a bite? How you gonna know you even get a bite? You can't finesse anything. So what do you do to compromise when you got a 30 mile an hour wind? A Carolina rig. So you are Texas rigging, like Texas. I Texas rigged on a Carolina rig. I Texas rigged the worm on a right, Carolina rig. Might be a better color. Who knows? So I'm still weedless. I'm really good and weedless, but yet I've got this weight, oh, this big giant one ounce weight that I can feel everything even in a 30 mile an hour wind. And so I don't have to be as finessey. I can drag that thing up there and hit a brush pile and that fish won't hardly let go of it. If I was fishing a Texas rig and, and I'm pulling hard on it when he had it, he's probably gonna spit it out. On that Carolina rig, he's got enough lead way and he can go sideways. He don't spit it out as quick. And for a guy that doesn't have a lot of experience, it's hard to beat a Carolina rig. Yes, sir, my buddy can catch a fish. All right. You got it in him, buddy. That was a good hook set. But I saw that rod and I thought, oh, my buddy's got one. Now hold that fish up and smile on the camera and tell him how great you are. Not that great, but I, I got a bit <laughs> Not of that great. <laughs> Finally got one. Woo I like it. We are fighting the wind. Oh, Alex, a trooper. We're hanging in here. Lake Fork, Texas. First Lake Fork, Texas bass on video, isn't it? Yeah, it's first one on video. You caught four or five yesterday, oh, yeah, but there yeah, wasn't yeah. on video. Yeah, that's true. You gotta say on video. Yeah, on video. There you go. That was good. That fish was out pretty deep. Yeah, he was. I like that. Catch another one. This portion of Hank's show is brought to you by Berkeley. Catch more fish. Yeti coolers, built for the wild. Well, a lot of people say, man, I hate a Carolina rig. I can't cast them. Well, think about this. When you're trying to throw a marble or a pebble you use a lot of wrist and you fling that thing out there. If you're throwing a flick of shad or a big dredge crankbait, there's a lot of difference. That flick of shad, you wanna, just like throwing that marble or that pebble, you wanna load that wrist up and fling it out there. With a hand grenade, 
you push it out. A big old fat hand grenade, you don't load your wrist. If you ever watch them, they heave that thing and push. Same principle, exact same principle. When you're throwing that big one ounce Carolina rig, come back here and stop and push that thing out there like you were throwing a hand grenade, not like you were trying to fling a pebble. But it's really important. Well, Alec caught on to that and we caught them. We caught them on a Carolina rig, on windy conditions, and for us, the big key was the maps. Man the maps. And then once we marked that place, to be able to go out there with an Ultrax trolling motor and hit lock. I mean, it made our fishing magic. I could interact with Alec. We could both walk to the back of the boat. We could lip a fish. We could take pictures. We could laugh. We could get a Slim Jim. We could get a bottle of water. Didn't matter. The boats hung right there where we marked it. Spot lock. Uh, is just crazy how it helped us catch fish in those conditions. Hey, I told you we're full of surprises. We started out in South Carolina. We ended up at Lake Fork in Texas. We have now finally got out of the wind. We found us a new lake. We're about an hour from Lake Fork. We may or may not tell you where we're at. Look at this rascal. He thinks he weighs 12 pounds. We're on a public waterway and it's a hot water lake, so that's all I'm gonna tell you for now. We may tell you more, but pretty pumped up. We come out here, just got here, catch fish. I like that. Boy, these are beautiful fish. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Fishing the old rubber worm, there's a tree. We got a beautiful point here that comes out. There's some timber here, and it looks so great on that map. All right, we got him. Step over here. Look at that, a good one. Good one. Hey, there we go. That is good. Oh, yeah. How about that? This is a lot different. Lake Fork, we have fought that wind, fought that wind, so I asked my buddies where I could get out of the wind. You got any more of those root beer looking? Oh, you like that old root beer. That's called a havoc. Am I not your favorite Pawpaw? You're my only Pawpaw. Well, that makes me your favorite then. I was right. We may just take off, go to a commercial break, and come back, and I will disclose where this mystery lake is. So stay with me. Watch these incredible commercials. Buy a lot of this great product, and we'll be right back with the answer. Where in the world is Alex Seward? Hank's show is made possible in part by Luz. Feel the difference. And by Minn Kota. Got it. Good job. I like the way you did that. Now, that's what I told you this morning when you hit All that. right, we're back from our little commercial break. Still chunking and winding. I am going to disclose our location on our mystery lake. And Lake Master has a map for this lake, and this is an awesome spot. It's Lake Welsh. Don't fall off the pictures, man, that'd be embarrassing. It is a warm water lake, so it gets fished a lot in the wintertime, but like we're talking water temp of 101.3. Get you some of that. You might need to quit pitching and just start fishing. Air temp, 101.2. <laughs> So welcome to Texas on the 4th of July, brother. There you go. Uh-oh, I reversed it. I'm taking a picture of me. Boy, I look good, though. I look so good. Uh, what you got? Isn't that pretty? That is a pretty fish. Hello down there. Easing back in the ocean. Kind of like an old man fishing, Alec. Hey, Papa, look at me up here. It's so funny how you work to get things perfect. And we started off in South Carolina where this lake we were in is full of giant bass. But we had all sorts of negative weather conditions. And I do not risk anyone's life over a bass as much as you want to stay when there is a threat of lightning. You just got to leave. You, sometimes you don't want to, but don't hang around when there's lightning. So 
Alec moved to Texas, what do I do? I load up over the 4th of July and drive to Texas. So we covered a lot of miles between where we started and where we ended up. But golly bump, we, we made a couple of moves, but it turned out to be really, really great. And he's such a trooper and I wanted it to happen for him so bad. And man, it was so cool at the end when we got on those really good fish and he started catching them. It, it worked out. And that's a whole deal about persevere. Persevere, man, don't give up, keep digging. And that's what we did and we had a great time together and we ended up catching some really, really good fish. So I, I hope you enjoyed the variety show. We've never done one like it, so it was exciting. Thanks for being with me. God bless you. I'm Hank Parker and I'll see you next week. And don't forget to visit us at hankparker.com, the place for tips, giveaways, and more. The house needs painting, the grass needs mowing, where's he at? Gone fishing.